What's up, it's your boy Ron, AKA Mugetsu. We're back at it again with another video. Uh, we're about to just get into quickly my uh, installation of my uh, Pioneer NEX series head unit. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe. We got more content headed your way. All you really need is a uh, small screwdriver, a large screwdriver, some tape. Some people prefer the solder method. I'm just temporarily using some electric tape for now, uh, preferably 3M. Uh, you're gonna need the radio harness. You're gonna need a aftermarket uh, factory harness. And um, you're also gonna need some other harness adapters for the radio antenna. And you're gonna need also another one for the um, iLink display if you choose to retain it. If not, what you could also use is an adapter to retain the steering wheel controls. Right now we're not gonna really go over that too much um, because I haven't purchased one yet due to uh, my budget. But um, apart from that, that's pretty much it. And then to mount the radio, you'll need a dash kit, which I'll show you in a few. First step is to pry this little guy out. There's usually some screws underneath. It's kind of hard to see it, but if you look closely here, there should be a screw and here there should be another screw i already removed those for the purpose of making the video easier so i'm just going to quickly pull on this a little bit of strength and it should just click right up like that once that's removed this guy should just slide right out there's no harnesses or anything attached to it it's just pulling on these little clips right here then if you look underneath here, um, there's basically an anchor screw that's not really visible, but it's underneath here. You have to remove that screw. The screw is also doubled as a bolt. If you like to use a bolt, I believe 10 millimeter is the socket size you can use to remove it. And then once you remove the anchor bolt, you should then be able to just literally pry this guy. But when you pry this guy out, you want to be careful because there's some harnesses attached. So what you want to do is slowly pull like this until you hear it. And then after the anchor screws removed, when you pull on it, it should just slide all out as one big piece like that. Now, when you're pulling this out, you want to be careful with the windshield wiper stock. And you also want to be careful with your shifter. I already placed it in fourth gear to give me a little bit of wiggle room to uh, work with. And you just pull and remove the harnesses from behind as you're slowly pulling back. If you notice here, I have most of the harnesses pulled out. This is actually what the anchor screw is attached to. Um, if you look back here, I mostly have all five harnesses plugged out. There's one additional one, the main one. To remove this one, there's a little lever here that you have to kind of swivel back. If you don't swivel this back, you cannot remove this, it's stuck. To swivel it back, you have to pull on that teeny tiny little tab in the center there, and also pull it back at the same time. That should unlock it from place, and then that's how you'll be able to remove your main factory harness. Next, what we're going to do is, since this is removed, and we're going to add a factory dash kit into this big gaping space here, we're going to remove these guys. AC controls, the vents, and the emergency button. We're also going to remove the brackets to make life a little easier as we're removing all the other stuff. So what you're going to do is take a screwdriver, you can use the short one or the big one, uh, whichever you prefer, and just start turning away. Once you remove the brackets, it should just come out very simply. Be extra careful with this. These are extremely sharp around the edges and can cut your hand easily. Just set it aside somewhere safe where it won't tear up your car fabric or your hands or your arms or what have you.
Once you're done removing everything, this is what your OEM should look like. Basically just an empty shell with the factory radio still in it. You can remove this if you want to, but honestly, I don't recommend it too much. I would just leave it all together. So if you ever do go back to stock, you can just attach everything here in reverse, plug it into the original factory harnesses and call it a day. So I just got my replacement kit in the mail. Um, the plastic is kind of cheap and flimsy. I was expecting to get a metric kit. I ended up getting this weird, like, American standard model or whatever. I mean, the finish isn't bad, but the fitment is not great. Like, you know, if you look here, there's a gap between the AC vent and the actual uh, dash kit. Also here, if you look at the AC controls, everything's cool up until you get to this edge here. And it's not flush. I mean, to the average person, it's not a big deal, but I'm extremely OCD when it comes to stuff like that. It's something that I'm going to be staring at now that I know it's there, you know, in my car. But, um, eh, you know how it goes. So I'm looking at the harnesses that the kit included, which are these two. This one on the top fits. The bottom one, however, if you notice, it has a square plug. Is not the same as my antenna plug. It looks like this person sent me the wrong kit. You look here, it's a circular plug on the ground. Um, I don't know if I should wait for a new kit or try to jerry rig it or something, but I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it goes right now. All right, so I just assembled the radio on the actual dash kit in a similar order, which I disassembled the factory one. I mounted the uh, brackets. I mounted the uh, metal hooks too, so it can go into the dash. All I have to do now is plug in my harnesses, plug in my sub, plug in my USB, plug in my microphone, and we should be all set. So this is the finished product of the uh, dash kit install. The radio does sit at a slight angle. Um, a little bezel there it doesn't really sit flush with this particular brand. I'm probably going to end up using the OEM one soon, but it doesn't look bad. I mean, I don't have my carbon fiber like, like here, but it's not too bad. Um, I'm gonna see if down the road though I get the OEM one because I like the fitment and the look much better than what I've been seeing here so far. But um, yeah, everything works. I turn the car on, radio fires right up. And in case you guys are wondering, this is the Pioneer 4200 NEX unit, which basically has Android Auto and uh, CarPlay. And basically, you can plug in your iPhone or your Android device on either or USB that's in the back of the unit and it'll integrate very nicely with the radio. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Alright guys, so this is the final result. I made is still working. The only part that doesn't work is the audio part. I still got my custom wallpaper. Got this guy working now. I put these back in case I ever do want to use the iPad in place of the head unit, which is probably not going to happen, but good to have the option, I guess. Uh, and then this little switch here is my grounding bypass. Basically, this head unit is not like the previous Avic units where you had to uh, ground the, uh, the parking wire. Now what they do is they ask you for um, a double ground whenever you switch to a different uh, source. So for example, if I'm here, if you notice, I now have a Chromecast that uh, I also hardwired into here. And basically, right now, when the switch is down, I'm grounded, right? But if I lift the switch like this, I'm no longer grounded. Basically, I can ground it here, and this will make the radio think that uh, it's my e brake. Now, I do not condone driving while watching content. Um, that is extremely dangerous. The only reason I did this bypass in particular is because being that my car is a manual, these, um, these cars are a little tricky in general if you're trying to watch something and you're stopped completely. 
but you don't want to have your e-brake on. Um, and also if you're trying to get some settings entered or whatever, or dial a number or an address or anything like that, um, unless your bypass is going to be very difficult to make a split second decision to travel somewhere or do something. But um, that's pretty much my head unit. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of this dash kit. The fitment is horrendous. Like I said, there's some gaps, but also underneath, you can actually fit your hand underneath there. There's no um, extra space here like the OEM unit. So um, I'm going to get the OEM bezel hopefully. And uh, if it works with this particular bezel, I'll be good. If not, I'll just get the bezel from Scotia and call it a day. But yeah, guys, um, that's pretty much my install. This is Ron, AKA Mugetsu, and we out.